Crispy. Hello, I'm Jacqueline Stallworth. I am a AP literature consultant and I work in teaching Northern Virginia. And I'm Carlos Barrera. I'm an AP Lang consultant and I teach at Sprayberry High School in Marietta, Georgia. And we're gonna do the College Board's uh, Equity and Access Policy Statement, a discussion about this. All right. Equity is about meeting kids where they are. And in the past, I used to think that meant um, where they are academically. And that is important, but it's really about where they are as people, where are their interests. And the only way I know, for me, the most effective way to know where students are is to talk to them. So I spend a lot of time getting to know my students. What do they need? What do they want? And then I try to cater the instructions for that to meet their needs. So you don't go in there with the instruction already mapped out. You go in there to find out what they're like first. Yeah, I kind of um, have in my mind where I'm trying to go, but I have to assess the kids and where they are. Because I don't want to start talking about um, a sentence and they already know how to write a sentence. That's like a waste of time, right? I don't want to have my needs first because they're not first. It's my students. I'm, I'm serving. So I need to talk to my kids. What are they interested? What do they like? So I spend a lot of time with that in the beginning. Yet in my mind, I have a blueprint of where we're trying to go and what I'm going to use to get there. But then I can tailor the conversations, the way we do it, based on what they all, where they are in life and try to engage them and introduce, and introduce subjects based on what the conversations that we've had with each other and create that familiarity. So if you had some students who are musically inclined, a lot of them that comes out in discussions, would you gear your conversation, would you, you gear your curriculum towards that? Absolutely. Um, I know that a lot of my students are into a uh, rap or, or um, hip hop, right? And they're across races. So right now I'm able to incorporate uh, Kendrick Lamar, he won the Pulitzer Prize. I think he's been stamped, right? So that's right. something I brought into the class and what gave me so much, empowered me in such a, a, a way that I, I didn't feel like I had to know it all. We did one song together and we talked about it and they, and my students knew more than I did. And then we talked about how can we write about this song and talk about what type of complex relationships that we see uh, sign that song. And then from there in groups, they were able to pick any song from the damn app and take ownership and teach me a lot and teach each other. So what you're saying that even though it's hip hop music, you're still challenging them with complex and uh, uh, nuanced literature. Yeah, because it's not the text. The text is the driver. The, I mean, the text is just the vehicle. What we do with the text, that's the driver. That is where we're gonna get the real skills. It's what you do with the text. So people who are afraid to use Kendrick Lamar compared to Shakespeare, what's the difference? It's about the complexity of the questions. It's about what are you gonna to do to get them there? So if someone is afraid to do that, no one was born knowing Shakespeare, right? You have to learn, you have to study, and, and, and then you have to do the same thing with other genres that is an equity issue, because now you're meeting your kids where they are instead of where you want them to be. So you're not afraid of using something in hip hop as a bridge to get the, the students to uh, Shakespeare? by any means necessary, by, as Malcolm Mack said. If I start them where I am, I'm going to lose a lot of kids, right? Yeah. But I have to start where they are, where their interests are, and then we can go forward. All right. With, you know, as far as access, they used to, you know, what is the word they use? Gates. They used to have special tests, and only a certain type of student would get into an AP class. And, and Usually when you, when you look to see what those gates were made of, they stopped you at the door with race, with your culture possibly, with the gender in some, in some classes, definitely your economic class. So now they, College Ward wants, us, wants the students to get into the classroom. So now you have them in. So I, I thought it was, it, it was uh, using race, culture, gender, social classes, the things that possibly kept them out as a strength in a, in a way of discussing the things in the classroom. And um, one of the ways it came out this, this year, we were, we were studying some programs on chefs from Netflix Chef's Table. 
And there was a, um, a chef, her name is Mashama Bailey. And she was from Savannah, Georgia. And her family moved from Savannah because they thought, you know, the only opportunities for African-Americans were either in domestic help or at the factory. And they wanted Mashama to go to college. So they went back to New York where they, where they were originally from and she got to college and she went to social and she got a degree in social work and started working but hated it because her dream was being a chef and she gave it all up to become a chef and she eventually went to France and studied and then as the program shows she got in her, um, with a with a, a friend named John Morris Marsano who was a white man and they um, they decided to start a restaurant called The Gray. And that is, uh, it was being put in into a, into a former, formerly segregated Greyhound station in Savannah. And so they created this beautiful restaurant. And so in doing so, in studying it and bringing in texts around these things, all the kids just started like opening up in Socratic seminars how, you know, I had this one kid, Mexican kid who, how he, he just admitted how he loves cooking and he's gotten a lot of, of, you know, he's gotten a lot of pressure from friends. Why are you into cooking? You know, the gender issue. Um, other people started uh, talking about going into cooking other cultures, uh, food and learning a lot from there. And it just became a way of all students to speak of these issues and then their, their academic performance and writing and discussing and projects zoomed up you know that's awesome and so now they felt like part of the class that that uh access doesn't necessarily mean now you're going to sit quiet quietly while while i lecture on william wardrobe or something like that right yeah so something like you're saying that's kind of like a lead way into the class that access or everybody we meet, we meet you there correct we meet you there we meet you there and then what we do we stir you up in the pot with what you already know. Yeah. So this can be done, right? It can be done. Um, I would tell every teacher, get rid of fear. Fear, according to Clint Smith, is the residue of um, silence is the residue of fear. So just do your thing, man. Do your thing and don't be afraid. Our kids know a lot. They know a lot and they can teach us a lot. 